Welcome to the next video on software engineering. In this video, we are going to talk about design concepts covered under module 5 of the syllabus. So, let us start with the first concept that is abstraction. In words of Grady Booch, it is one of the fundamental ways that we as a human cope with complexity. Okay, so when we consider a modular solution to any kind of problem, many level of abstraction can be poured. At the highest level, what we do? A solution is stated in broad terms using the language of the problem environment. Okay, but as we move towards the lower level, a more detailed description of the solution is provided. Okay, so if we think of abstraction it has two aspect that is one is procedural and one another one is the data abstraction as we move through different levels of abstraction we work to create these type of abstraction that is procedural and data what exactly procedural abstraction means a procedural abstraction refers to a sequence of instructions that have a specific and limited function for example if someone asks eat a fruit kept in the or fridge okay eat a fruit kept in the refrigerator okay so what it implies a sequence of procedural steps what are these steps like taking the fruit out of the refrigerator fine again washing it then cutting it and then eating the fruit okay so these type of sequential steps can we think for a particular abstraction of procedure okay the name of a procedure abstraction implies these functions but specific details are suppressed as we have seen that is it is a just a instruction but it refers to many such of instructions next one is data abstraction data abstraction is a named collection of data that describes a data object for example in the context of the procedural abstraction eat we can define a data abstraction root like uh, any data object of concern we can have this with certain characteristics or attributes that describe the fruit like name, color, taste, size, etc. So ultimately what we are trying to do here that we are keeping only the required things not providing the details okay so data and procedural abstraction comes under the abstraction concept next one is the architecture software architecture alludes to the overall structure of the software and the ways in which that structure provides conceptual integrity for the system okay so we are providing conceptual integrity for a system in its simplest form what exactly architecture means it is the structure or organization of program components the modules the manner in which these components interact and the structure of data that are used by the component so we are talking about different modules interaction between these modules what are the data structures used by these components all are going to be covered under this term architecture 
in a broader sense our components can be generalized to represent major system elements and their interaction okay next is patterns as we already know some templates are there for creation of the software elements so let us go through it brad appleton defines design pattern in the following manner a pattern is nothing but a named nugget of insight which conveys the essence of a proven solution to a recurring problem within a certain context amidst competing concern what exactly it means a design pattern describes a design structure okay and what it does it solves a particular design problem within a specific context and amid forces that may have an impact on the manner in which the pattern is applied and used so we have a specific con context and it is a design structure which is already there you have to use that pattern to solve a particular problem next modularity okay so what exactly it means we are going to divide the overall system into some components okay so, so software is divided into separately named and addressable components sometimes called modules and these are integrated to satisfy the overall problem requirements fine it has been stated that modularity is the single attribute of the software that allows a program to be intellectually be manageable how let us see because if we are talking about modularity there must be some benefits so why modularity is important monolithic software what exactly it means that is a large program composed of a single module cannot be easily grasped by the software engineer okay so different type of components are really needed the number of control paths span of reference number of variables and overall complexity would make understanding close to impossible next to impossible okay in almost all instances we should break the design into many modules hoping to make understanding easier and as a consequence reduce the cost required to build the software next is information hiding the principle of information hiding suggests that modules be characterized by design decisions that each hide from all other okay so how to obtain the best set of modules are covered under this okay in other words modules should be specified and designed so that information that is algorithms and data contained within a module is inaccessible to other modules that have no need for such information suppose we are having different kind of modules only the required information the data the algorithm should be communicated to other one okay functional independence the concept of functional independence is the direct outgrowth of modularity the concept of abstraction and the information hiding what exactly we try we are dividing one system into different components that is one simple software is divided into different modules we have different level of abstraction procedural and data abstraction we have already discussed and the information hiding only the required information is going to be shared between these modules okay so functional independence is achieved by developing modules with single minded function and an aversion to excessive interaction with other modules we try to create modules such as it deals with one part of the whole system okay so in another way we can see that stated in another way we should design software so that each module addresses a specific subset of the requirements and has a simple interface when viewed from other parts of the program structure okay now why it is important software is easier to be developed independent modules are easier to maintain and test 
error propagation is reduced okay and reusable modules are possible because we are talking about a single function for a particular single module okay next what are the qualitative criteria for assessment of independence here we come with two concept that is cohesion and coupling cohesion is an indication of the relative functional strength of the module and if we talk about coupling it is an indication of the relative interdependence among modules let us see cohesion is a natural extension of the information hiding concept a cohesive module performs a single task requiring little interaction with other components in other parts of the program while we uh, if we talk about in simple words a cohesive module should ideally do just one thing that is we have covered earlier that is single mindedness okay now coupling coupling is an indication of the interconnection among modules in a software structure how they are communicating with other part of other uh, uh, component or other modules in a particular system so coupling depends on the interface complexity between modules the point at which entry or reference is made to a module and what data pass across the interface okay now coming on to the next uh, design concept that is refinement refinement is actually a process of elaboration you begin with a statement of function that is at the higher level of abstraction and next we refine to reach at the lowest level of the description okay so the statement describes function or information conceptually but provides no information about the internal working of the function or the internal structure of the information if we are talking about the highest level of abstraction okay when we elaborate when we refine then we reach to the more and more detail of uh, the system to be implemented so refinement occurs refactoring another important concept it is a reorganization technique that simplifies the design or code of a component without changing its function or behavior okay so Fowler defines in refactoring in following manner that it is the process of changing a software system in such a way that it does not alter the external behavior of the code whatever function is performed by that code is going to be performed but internally there may be some changes okay how a software is refactored so when software is refactored the existing design is examined for the redundancy repetition unused design elements inefficient or unnecessary algorithms poorly constructed or inappropriate data structures or any other design failure that can be corrected to yield a better design so refactoring is such that we just modify the internal structure without modifying the work functions provided by that part okay references thank you for watching